this is this is a short topic, but a really important one, and I really wanted to talk about it because I saw uh, I've seen many debates, many conflicts based on this really simple topic, which is is money and the finances, financial issues related to dogs in many many aspects. Uh, money exact actually has a, a really interesting. Uh, it is a really interesting topic in, in our life because, because for, for centuries or, or just in the current era, there are many, many topics related to money and assets and value. We can't really find the proper answer. We have many hypocritical statements stating that, that money is not, not connected to, to, to anything. It's just something people invented and it has nothing to do uh, with, with running a proper life. Is it true? It, honestly, not really. Uh, myself, uh, I'm, I'm a manager. I have my qualification on that, so I, I know, know the numbers, I know how it connects to something, and in case you, you work uh, in animal welfare, uh, you, 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 ha you can have the enthusiasm to, to save dogs, for example, but if you don't have money to pay for the bill, uh, then it, it, it won't work. Just, just because you, you, you want to do something good and you don't have the assets, you are blocked. You are totally blocked. And if you go to the shop to buy your food, uh, you have to pay for that. And you can't really say that, excuse me, I'm an animal welfare activist rescuing dogs, so I would like to, to buy my, my dinner for cheaper. So money is everywhere. Uh, it's in our life. And it is, it is really, really connected to dogs as well. There are many aspects of, of the financial field in, in, in buying dogs, rescuing dogs, adopting dogs, which are absolutely unclear. And because, depending on, on, on your nationality and your cultural background, many times we, we absolutely ignore talking about financial questions, because, because as soon as uh, money is involved, uh, then you have the feeling that, that it, is, it is purely connected exclusively to the self-interest of the person just to, just to get more, more fortune, more, more, more value, more financial benefits in the life, but that is not true. First of all, first question comes, when you are buying a dog, how, would you, how much would you pay for that? What is your inner motive? What uh, it, 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 it makes in your decision? Uh, because, for example, in Hungary and in many other countries, there is a huge trend that people buy very cheap, purebred dogs uh, from, from, from puppy farms, from backyard breeding, home breeding, because that dog exactly looks like the other one. And that's all. And they can buy it immediately for, for a really cheap price. And they do not consider other things. And I do agree that it is a huge problem. It was mentioned before uh, that, that uh, people uh, really don't consider anything. They would like to have a dog, and they immediately want to get a dog from a shelter, from, from, uh, from the internet, or, or wherever. And then comes the next question, how much it is to keep a dog. There are surveys. Uh, Amongst, amongst regular people, what they think about uh, keeping a dog, dog, a cost of keeping dogs. And it is, it is shocking, because they just think that, that to buy a dog, it means you have to pay for the, for the price of the dog. Or if you adopt a dog from a shelter, then you don't need to, to pay money or, or a small amount as a donation. But to keep a dog, we all know, it, it, it costs money. And it costs money to maintain and restore the health of the dog. And this is something uh, which, which everyday dog keeper usually forget to calculate this, this amount as well. And there is a really, really uh, threatening situation at the moment with, for example, the heartworm. Because, because it is something a dog can catch really easily. 
but to, to, to monitor the status of the dog, to cure the dog, to do anything costs money. And in case someone thinks that to buy a dog, to, to keep a dog means pay the price to get the dog, full stop, period, then what happens when you have to pay a huge price for the veterinarian service or, or anything else when an accident, a disease occurs? And when you, when, you, when you ignore that keeping a dog costs money, not just to buy the dog, there are many different problems. First of all, cheap dogs usually means expensive problems. Uh, yesterday I mentioned uh, some, some really sentimental illusions uh, related to, to adopting dogs from shelters. I have friends who adopted dogs and they paid much more for the vet after that. Uh, related to a situation when they would have bought a dog from a breeder. And you have to consider that. And it happens that you buy a cheap dog from the internet, you adopt a dog, and, and you think that it is all you have to, to, to pay for. And as I mentioned before, if you don't uh, realize this, uh, that you need money to keep your dog healthy, it leads to further problems, which are abandoning dogs and euthanizing dogs. Many dogs uh, which would be really expensive to cure or to, or to care about their health are euthanized because, or not euthanized, they're just thrown to the street. Uh, the, ba the, the basic reasons why people abandon dogs which go to shelters later uh, are, are the behavioral problems people do not want to, ha to, to handle with. Aggressive dog, spoiled dog, whatever. And the other reason is that the dog is unhealthy, especially in an older age. And, and those ones who, who, who work for a shelter or, or volunteer for a shelter exactly knows that a dog full of illnesses, diseases, at a very old age is really, really complicated to have adopted, to find a new life. Plus, it takes a lot of money for the, for the shelter, for the organizer, to fix the health state of the dog. And then comes uh, two concepts. Which, which I think it's, it's perfectly presents why it is uh, something, this financial, all these financial things related to dogs, something which, which we can't really handle, we have no exact idea. It was mentioned before during the conference that there are, for example, breeds with, with very rare colors. In many cases, these breeds are not registered or cannot be used for breeding because these are uh, genetic defects with, with, with other health issues. But you can sell these sort of dogs for, for the triple because these are rare and, and we are always competing with each other. We are human. I would like to have a much better car with, with, than my colleague. I would like to have a bigger salary than my other colleague. I would like to show off to my neighbor. We, we all have this sort of ego, but it, it just depends how, how, how healthy this competition is. So people many times uh, pay huge amount of money for, for dogs, extremely huge amount of money. And they don't really care about, about the health of these dogs because besides these rare uh, color dogs, there are the teacup dogs. I, I don't think they are popular here. Or I hope so. These, these really, really tiny small dogs for those people who, who consider chihuahuas as, as a dog with a large body. Now you can have an ex, extra small sized dog uh, with, full of, full of uh, diseases, full of, of illnesses, and, and people don't care. It is something unique, something you can have and others can't, and they pay for a huge amount of money. And on the opposite, there is the other thing. It is always uh, uh, a debate uh, and, and breeders are attacked why they are asking for, for money. And it, it was mentioned many times that, that dogs now are, are, are the company of, of the human. They have a very strange uh, position, in, position and function in human life. And, and this sentimental thinking uh, tends to say that, oh, 
I have a fur baby. Why should I pay for that when, when for example, the shelters are full of dogs? Uh, and, and people can't really uh, get things together. If I have something substituting a human in my life, why to pay for that? It is absolutely immoral and unethical. And just to, just to make it more complicated, uh, finance, financial questions are our biggest shoe amongst breeders as well. I saw uh, a very, very fiery debate on Facebook about two or three months ago among Hungarian breeders about if it's ethical to, to advertise puppies from a litter because it means that, it, that the breeder is not really a breeder but someone who is, who is uh, breeding and selling dogs for, for money exclusively, and it is absolutely unethical. So even breeders can't really uh, do and say that, okay, we ask money for the puppies. And strangely, these people who were opposing against uh, advertising puppies from a kennel, they, they, they thought that is absolutely okay if you, you put pictures on Facebook saying puppies available from this litter. It is, it is hypocrisy. It is hypocrisy because because we are saying something and and doing absolutely the opposite. Or or I don't know why these things are mixed up in the head of the people. Uh, but it's a problem within within breeders as, as well, and it is not a clear and defined definition or or or, or concept who they are and why why people should pay for the puppies. And this is a uh, texting related to this, this matter, it says to expel the persons who breed and or sell dogs with economic purposes exclusively. And to make it absolutely clear, uh, just, just define the wording economic. According to the Cambridge Dictionary, it says making a profit or likely to make a profit. So in case uh, I am a breeder, I, have, I do my, my counts, and I say that, that the average cost of, of a puppy was 1,000 euros, and I will sell this puppy for 1,005 euros, then I made profit. So, yes? How can you how can you divine exclusively? Exactly. What? Exactly. I know. Yeah. That's why I want to, to go. So if 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 I I uh, uh, I have five euros on that uh, on that puppy, you could say that I was making profit. And exclusively is a definition, a legal definition, that is not defined. And in case of breeding, I think you can't say exclusively. And what if I say that, that I was taking care of my dogs, I am a breeder who, who give up uh, the everyday work, I won't, I, I won't take employment anywhere, because I know to, to raise up a litter takes time. It's not just giving food to the dog and say hello, but I will stay at home all, all time. What, what to do with that? And, and in that case, I want that five euros to buy food for myself. Am I, am, I, am I someone to be excluded because I was making profit? And I had a conversation uh, the other day, the same conversation, uh, from the aspect of animal welfare organizations, when people are doing uh, profit, being an animal welfare activist. Is it bad or good? It depends, again. If I am an activist, if I run a shelter, if I work uh, 16 hours a day, if I, and after, if I go to the, to the shop to buy my dinner, I have to pay for that. And I could say that, okay, uh, uh, 
I won't do this, I won't run the shelter, I go back to my own profession and I will earn money and I, I, I don't give a damn on, on, on rescuing dogs, for example. This is a really fragile thing. And, and this, is, this is the main point which causes really huge arguments and huge attacks, both on breeders and both on, on uh, uh, animal welfare organizations many, many times. Because this thing is not clear at all. And who knows uh, where this sentence is in this sentence, because, because I am quoting this sentence. This is in the FCI statutes. So the FCI states that, that someone who, who, who is a breeder is, is, is selling dogs with economic purposes exclusively, which you can't define what exclusively is should be expelled from breeding. So in that case, uh, and, it, and it can be dangerous, I know the idea about this, but in case, in my case, if I am a breeder, I am not. If I am a breeder, I make this five uh, euro profit on the dog. I have no full-time job, and someone reports me to my kennel club that Dear Kennel Club, please exclude Attila from breeding because, because he is a puppy farmer. And, and uh, the kennel club says that, sorry, uh, he is not a puppy farmer. Then the person who would like to cause me some harm, they will go to the FCI s stating that, that the kennel club is not following the statues. This is, uh, this, I, I know the, the idea behind this concept, but it is a much more complex thing than just writing down that if someone has profit on dogs, then we protected ourselves to the anti-breeding propaganda, stating that breeders are people who exclusively breed for money, because it's much more complex. And if you uh, think it through, uh, and this is, this is another part which is not thought through. On one hand, everyone wants healthy dogs well socialized dogs, dogs taken care about, etc, etc, etc. It takes money. On the other hand, everyone is complaining that for these puppies you have to pay. So what would you like? What would you like then? So you want breeders to, to take health tests, to socialize the dog, to, to, to have proper nutrition for the breed, to take care about vaccination, etc, etc, etc. And who is going to pay that price? Okay, you want a healthy dog, but who is going to pay for that? In that case. And then comes the, the, the other question. Is it really a shame if you ask or pay money for a dog? And it goes back to, to that point that we don't really talk about it. It is, it is a taboo within the breeder society because breeders, kennel clubs, do not want to talk about it because it is a sensitive issue. It is an issue uh, many anti-breeding propaganda and campaign using. But breeders are on the horizon exclusively. I, I haven't really seen campaign, such campaign against home breeding, backyard breeding, stating that, that okay, we heard uh, the, the, the portion of, of pugs unregistered. They are born. Why is not someone attacking those people who, who breed pugs at home, uh, a breed which has uh, certain health issues? Why they are not attacked? So why, why everyone is telling that, that the breeders, the breeders, the breeders, the breeders, the breeders? Because it's much easier. They are on the radar. And meanwhile, you, you spend a lot of money on, on health tests and you want to take care about your dog. I go home, I won't register anything, and I will make a very huge fortune uh, selling my dogs, look-alike dogs, and, and I will make a huge profit, and no one will care about that. So this is an issue I really think should be sorted out and, and to, be, to be considered and reconsidered, because there are many, many unanswered questions and many, many problems. And, and it is a big issue and a very dangerous, very complicated issue. 
And just a final thought about this. Uh, we rec recently, dog lovers and, and everyone fighting for the rights of, of animals, I, I, mean, I'm I mean not just the activists, but also people who, who sit, sit at home and, and posting all the bullshit on, on Facebook under the name of animal welfare. <laughs> we always say that uh, dogs are living creatures they are, ob they are not objects, whatever. Are they really? Because, because many times we, we don't even consider uh, when we are talking about the rights of dogs as, as, as a living creature which has needs. So many times I have the feeling from many aspects that, that it's, it is like just an iPhone. I just check is cheaper where I have more guarantee or warranty I take it home and if it goes wrong it is not my fault it is not my fault why should I pay more I, I bought a pedigree dog how comes in in two years it will get ill or it breaks the bones or whatever so I think it is a really really big problem that we don't really understand most of the cases, what a dog really is. And finances are, 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 are directly connected to keeping a dog and breeding a dog and, and could go on. So I, I, I don't have a real solution for that. I just wanted to, to raise up some, some questions and my concerns because I see this as, as a huge problem and it should be talked about. Thank you.